everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Usual, and today I wanna to talk to you about class dipping. Now, this isn't the same as multi-classing, as we're only taking between one to three levels at the most of a secondary class to make our characters more interesting, more powerful, or even just give ourselves some combinations that we normally wouldn't be able to have if we went with a pure class. Now, it does bear mentioning that in the tabletop version of Dungeons and Dragons, you need a 13 at least in certain ability scores to be able to go into certain classes. Like, let's say this barbarian has an intelligence of nine. Traditionally, they would not be able to become a wizard because they didn't have an intelligence of at least 13. However, Larian Studios has removed this restriction, so we can go ahead and we can go into whatever we'd like. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to work very well. So be aware that some things are not going to work with other things, like the Barbarian's Rage. You cannot rage and you cannot cast spells at the same time. So you can't be a raging Barbarian and cast spells. Now, if you're not raging, you can still be a Barbarian who casts spells. You just can't be raging while you're casting your spells. Now, the good news is that we're going to be able to respec early, often, and cheap. Early in the game, in the first act, you're going to find this undead by the name of Withers, and we're going to bring him to your camp. Now, he'll come to your camp no matter what later on, but you're going to be able to respec your characters over and over again, and that, coupled with the game save system, allows for a lot of experimentation, and eventually, you're going to be able to create a party that's going to be exactly what you need for your game. Okay, right off the bat, let's talk about save saving throw proficiencies. Now, saving throws are going to be whenever uh, you need to do an ability check to, uh, to see if you're able to overcome something. And your original class that you take will have your, uh, your original saving throw proficiencies. Now, if you took Bard, it would be Dexterity and Charisma. If you took Fighter or Barbarian, as your original class, it would be strength and constitution. So your original class is going to give you your saving throw proficiencies. When you take a secondary class, you will not have these saving throw proficiencies. So we're going to ignore those for now because uh, because we're just talking about dips right now, which will be your secondary class, right? Okay. Okay, first off today, we're going to go ahead and start with Barbarian. Now you're going to get light armor proficiency, medium armor proficiency, shield proficiency, simple weapon proficiency, and martial weapon proficiency. And also for clarification purposes and to make it a little bit easier for you to follow, I'm gonna go ahead and use Baldur's Gate Wiki today. This is a BG3.wiki. This is the most accurate wiki as far as I'm concerned that exists on the internet right now. It's made by players, for players, and I highly recommend it. So if you'd like to go over there and you'd like to follow along, you can. And any changes that are made to the game should be on the wiki as soon as it is absolutely possible because the players that are actually putting this together are doing a really good job. It's the official wiki of Baldur's Gate. All right, your first level in Barbarian is going to give you Rage. Now, what Rage gives you, and you get two of these Rages per long rest, what Rage gives you is it gives you resistance to all physical non-magical damage, which means bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage. And then you're also going to get, whenever you hit on an attack, you're going to get an extra two points of damage that is added to your damage as well. So, and you also get unarmored defense. So if you are playing, say, a monk who also has unarmored defense, those do not stack. But what that will do is when you're not wearing armor, you add your constitution modifier to your armor class. So if you have a plus two to your uh, constitution, you will have a plus two to your armor class. Um, so also wearing heavy armor does keep you from raging. So you're not gonna be able to rage if you're wearing heavy armor. So if you're a fighter, and a barbarian, then you're not going to be able to wear. You're not going to be able to rage where you're wearing your heavy armor. However, that's going to be okay if you take a second level in barbarian and you're a fighter. You get reckless attack, and reckless attack gives you advantage when you attack against uh, another opponent. But also that will allow them to have advantage on you as well until your next turn. So be aware of that. And also you have you get danger sense, which gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws against traps, spells, and surfaces. So surfaces in this game uh, mean like if an uh, enemy caster casts grease on the ground and uh, you go and, you, and you're, you're gonna, you need to roll to see whether or not you fall, you get advantage on that saving throw with danger sense. So be aware that, that is, uh, that's a very cool ab ability. Also, you can't be blinded 
you can't be deafened and you can't be incapacitated when you have danger sense. So that's a passive ability that you're able to, to, able to have as a barbarian. Now to give you a couple of examples of classes that are gonna do really well with, with the barbarian class dip is we're gonna be fighter and druid. Now fighter with action surge and extra attack at level five with the rage and the reckless attack is gonna give you an immense amount of damage in your first round. It's gonna be a burst damage that you're really gonna enjoy, I think. And then with druid, you go ahead and you go into a rage and then you shape shift into an animal. Usually it's a bear. They call this a barbarian build. And I will be doing build videos later on once the once Baldur Gate 3 releases completely. But right now I'm not gonna, we're just talking about dips today. But the barbarian build is one of the more popular and more powerful multi-class builds that exist in the game. So it's something that you should be take a look at if you're a druid, is, is either a single dip or double dip into barbarian. All right, next up we have Bard. Bard's not one of my dips that I get excited about, but you know what? It might for some people. I know if people like Bards, it's a charisma-based class. Uh, you do get proficiency in light armor, simple weapons, hand, crossbow, long sword, rapier, and short sword, as well as mus musical instrument proficiency. We are going to get some spells, and we do get Bardic Inspiration, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's going to give a, an extra, when you cast it on one of your one of your party members or yourself, you get a, a 1d6 bonus to your next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. That's kind of big. Also, if you take a second dip in Bard, you do get Song of Rest. Now, what this basically does is it gives you basically like another short rest. So, normally you get two short rests before you have to take a long rest. And this Song of Rest actually gives you an additional short rest. Rather than take a long rest, if you're running low on supplies, having bards in your party might be beneficial to you. Also at level 2, you're going to get Jack of All Trades, which is going to add half of your proficiency bonus rounded down to ability checks you're not proficient in. So that can be very big as far as making your rolls when it comes to your social aspect of the game. You also do get some spells uh, as a bard. You're going to get a couple of cantrips. Uh, most of these are okay. If you have a low charisma, most of these will still be all right. Minor illusion, light, dancing lights, friends, things like that. Things like vicious mockery, though, you're going to you require your opponent to save. If you have a low charisma, they're going to be able to save a lot easier than if you have a high charisma build, say, as a warlock. You could be a bard lock. A bard lock is a, is a perfectly justifiable um, uh, uh, build. Uh, you, you go Warlock and then dip into Bard to get these extra abilities. Um, most of these these spells, like, you're, like you have uh, Cure Wounds, um, you have uh, Healing Word, you've got uh, Featherfall, you've got, let's see, what's, uh, what's another good one? Sleep is a good one. Uh, that doesn't require, there's no saving throw there. Speak with Animals is great. And, you know, Warlock had, didn't have a lot of spell slots, so if you wanted some more spell slots, this is the way to go. Now, cleric is one of those uh, one of those dips that where it's 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 very simple, but it's also super complicated. And the reason it's super complicated is they're going to be adding a ton of cleric subclasses in the in the game when it comes out. So depending on what subclass you pick, that your spells are going to change. You're going to get different spells depending on what domain you pick, and also you, you're going to get. Um, Light armor proficiency, medium armor proficiency, but if you take war cleric, you're going to also get heavy armor proficiency, and then you get shield proficiency, simple weapon proficiency, but if you take war cleric, you're going to get martial weapon proficiency. And then, of course, like I said, your domain uh, spells are going to change depending on the domain you pick, and then at level two... If you decide to take a double dip in cleric, you're also going to get your channel divinity action, which you can have, I think it's one, one, once per turn or once per long rest. I think it's once per long rest for at level two. And that is an additional ability that you can unlock depending on your domain. Also at level two, you get turn undead as one of your uh, channel divinity actions. So with there being as much undead as there is in the game, I expect we're going to see a lot of build videos where they have a, a cleric as a secondary class because it's almost a no brainer. If you're going to, if you're going to dip or you're going to multi-class to multi-class into cleric and de just depending on what you want to do, that's going to depend, that's going to dictate what subclass you're going to take. But three classic uh, builds are going to be uh, cleric fighter, uh, cleric paladin or cleric wizard. Those are the, those are the three classics that, that I, I can think of off the top of my head. I will be doing build videos, like I said, in the future, but right now let's just, we're just talking about dips. Now the druid in Baldur's Gate 3 is a weird one because uh, in, in classic Dungeons and Dragons, uh, druids don't wear metal armor and they won't use metal shields, but it doesn't seem to be a problem in Baldur's Gate 3 as I put in, I put uh, Shadowheart's armor on my, on my druid 
and it, and my druid didn't have a problem casting spells. So you should be okay. Most times, if you're not proficient in the armor, you can't cast spells. So it didn't seem to be an issue. You do have proficiency in light armor and medium armor and shields. You do have some uh, weapon proficiencies here. And then you're going to have spells and cantrips that you're going to be given as well. And if you double dip, now this is what most people are going to be doing. You're going to double dip, uh, take two levels in Druid, and then you're going to be able to Wild Shape. And you're going to be able to turn to an animal, which is basically going to double your hit points or more in battle. So you're going to be able to just Wild Shape, uh, go into battle. Then when you get down to, to uh, zero hit points, uh, then you can shape, shape Shift into an animal again. And then get down to zero hit points and then you'll have your other class that you can fall back on so i mean just having a double dip in druid for any other class uh can be really really powerful now the classes that synergize well with druid are going to be cleric and ranger because they are wisdom based classes well ranger is a dexterity based class with wisdom uh, as their secondary uh highest trait so, I mean, you're going to have your dexterity is going to be super high and then your wisdom is going to be the next highest uh, trait that you have. So those are going to synergize well with Druid. But you, like I said, if you're going for just the wild shape, it doesn't matter what other class you are. Um, it's definitely going to be helpful. So, yeah, just like any other spellcaster, uh, if you have a low wisdom in Druid, then any of the other uh, abilities that are gonna try to, you're going to try to hit people with, you're going to have a hard time hitting with. Like Poison Spray, you're going to have a hard time with, with the Cantrip, or in, with the Prepared Spells, trying to entangle someone with Entangle, it's a strength saving throw. If you have a low wisdom, you're going to have a hard time entangling people, they're going to break free pretty easy. Or like with Thunder Wave, uh, you'll have a hard time knocking them back. They'll still take half damage, but you're going to have a hard time knocking them back if that's, if that's your, your goal. Okay, so the next dip is going to be a double dip in fighter. And um, you can just take one and that'll be fine. But usually people take two levels in fighter because of the action surge at level two. Now, at level one, you get fighting style, and that's nice. You know, there's a bunch of different fighting styles you can choose from. You do get proficiency in all of the armors, all of the weapons, and shields, which allows a caster to be able to cast their spells in heavy armor, which gives them an immense uh, amount of durability. And also, that gives them second wind at level one as well, which is a bonus action healing ability once per long rest. Now, action surge is also once per long rest, and what that does is it allows you to take a second action in your turn once per long rest. So what, that's, what it basically does is it allows a caster to dump a high level spell twice in one round, which could end a, an enemy right away or end a whole battle right away, depending on the level of the, of the caster. So to give you an example, even a level one wizard that has two levels in fighter is going to be able to dump two magic missiles back to back in one round. And now if you're at level seven and you are a level five wizard and you have access to level three spells, that gives you access to fireball. And if you can dump two fireballs on the enemy, well, then you're just going to end them all together. At least that's the potential for having two levels in fighter if you are a caster. And it's not just that either. You know, a fighter rogue is really nice. Fighter ranger is really nice. Really a double dip in fighter and any other class is probably going to be pretty okay and definitely worth trying out all right for paladin there's usually only run one reason why somebody takes a, a double dip in paladin and that's for divine smite now there, there could be other reasons but at level one you do get all of the things that the fighters get you get proficiency in all of armors all weapons and shields you also do get lay on hands which gives you a healing ability and you also do get divine sense which gives you advantage on attack rolls against celestials fiends and undead for two turns you it's a bonus action you have to activate it and then depending on your subclass that you pick at level one you're going to get another additional action so for o oath of the ancients you're going to get a two healing uh, radiance for all of your allies within a 10-foot radius or for oath of devotion you're going to get holy rebuke which you call upon your oath to grant an ally a vengeful aura that deals 1d4 radiant damage to anyone who hits them with a melee attack. And that lasts for two turns. Now, at level two, you get a couple of things. You do get a fighting style like you do uh, at level one with a fighter. So you can pick up an additional fighting style. And so you could have two different fighting styles if you went with like fighter, 
Paladin, but most people pick up Paladin for level two for Divine Smite. And what that does is when you hit with your weapon attack, you do the damage of your weapon normally does, but you also do 2d8 radiant damage to normal enemies or 3d8 radiant damage to fiends and undead. Now, they also you also have a, access to other smites as well. But to just give you an example really quick, just so people to say don't say I'm not thorough, we have Searing Smite, we have Thunderous Smite, and we have Wrathful Smite. So just to give you an example of some of the other smites that you can have there at level two, there's your first level spells. You get a bunch of different first level spells as well when you get a level two Paladin. Also, if you are going for Divine Smite, most people go into Sorcerer because the Paladin and the Sorcerer, their ability scores are both based out of Charisma. But with Baldur's Gate 3 not requiring a, um, a ability score of 13 in your different abilities, I would suggest maybe going and looking at possibly instead of Sorcerer, which only gives you two spell slots at level one, maybe looking into Cleric, which will give you three, which is an additional spell slot, or maybe even Wizard, which gives you three spell slots as well at level one, uh, depending on what you want to do. If you're going for Divine Smite, the more spell slots, the better. Oh, and also if you have any levels in Paladin and you kill an innocent by mistake or on purpose, uh, just be aware that you might have a visit from uh, the original Oathbreaker, and then uh, he might force you into making a decision that might change your whole entire character. Yeah, it's a thing. All right, so if you're going to dip into Ranger, it's going to give you light armor and medium armor as well as shield proficiency. You are also going to be proficient in simple weapons and martial weapons. Uh, you're going to get a favored enemy and a natural explorer ability at level one. At level two, you're going to get a fighting style and you're also going to get some spells which are going to be uh, druid based or, dru or nature based. So uh, right now, we don't have the information for the Gloomstalker Ranger at the moment. Well, I will have a build video coming out for the Gloomstalker Ranger when full release happens. So if you're here for that, I apologize, but today's not the day for you. But favorite enemies right now, we have available Bounty Hunter, which gives you proficiency in investigation. Creatures you hit with ensnaring strike have disadvantage on their saving throw. Keeper of the Veil is you specialize in hunting creatures from other planes of existence. You gain proficiency in Arcana and can cast protection from good, evil and good, which grants protection against aberration, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Magebreaker gives you a history of battling spellcasters. You gain proficiency in Arcana and the True Strike Cantrip, which gives you advantage on attack rolls against a creature. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability for this spell. This, uh, by the way, rangers are a dexterity and wisdom-based um, uh, class. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have low dexterity or low wisdom, some of your stuff is probably not going to work so well. A ranger knight is going to give you proficiency in heavy armor, as well as a proficiency in history. And sanctified stalker, will uh, you're sworn to hunt the enemies of a holy or druidic order, you gain proficiency in religion and the sacred flame cantrip, which deals 1d8 radiant damage. Wisdom is your spellcasting ability for this cantrip. All right, like I said, wisdom is going to be your main uh, your main stat along with dexterity. You're probably coming off of a rogue if you want to dip into ranger because uh, assassin rogue, gloomstalker ranger is probably going to be the favorite of most people who want to like multi-class or dip into ranger. So we're going to get you that build here in a future video, I promise. Natural Explorer, years of traveling in the wild have made you particularly attuned to a beast or adept at surviving in certain environments. Beast Tamer is going to give you the fine familiar cantrip, guys. Or a spell, not cantrip. Spell. So you're going to have you know, your, your little, uh, your little uh, uh, familiar that you can, carry, you can take with you. Cast that spell. You can, it's the same as every, any other fine familiar spell. So you're going to have your choice of, I think, one of seven or eight different, um, different animals that you can choose from. You have Urban Tracker, which is an expert at navigating the wild within the city. You gain sleight of hand proficiency. I don't know why you would take this. I mean, you go if you go to the Origin and you go to Charlatan, you can get that there. I mean, I mean, depends on what you want. Maybe you want a different Origin and you want a different proficiency. That's very possible, and that's okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to give you the information. Um, let's see, Natural Explorer. Now, Wasteland Wanderer is in, is interesting because it gives you resistance to certain uh, damage types so if you are a cold wasteland wanderer it gives you resistance to cold damage fire is fire poison is poison 
Now, if you were to, let's say, just for the sake of theory crafting, let's say that you were um, a dragonborn and you get a resistance to a certain damage type. Let's say you're a black dragonborn and you have resistance to um, your, your breath weapon is acid. So you have resistance to acid and then you become a and you dip into a ranger wasteland wanderer and cold. Now you have resistance to cold as well. And then let's say you want to dip into Sorcerer and you want to take um, Draconic Heritage and you want to dip into um, Red Dragon and that gives you resistance to fire. Now all of a sudden at level 2, if you were to do each one of these at level 1, Sorcerer at level 1, Ranger at level 1, and then you have a Dragonborn character, you have three resistances at level 2. That I, I, would never, I would never do that, but somebody might. And that's just a, an idea of, of how versatile you can get with some of these builds at an early, early level. And like I said, at level two, you're also going to get a fighting style. It can be archery, defense, dueling, or two weapon fighting. And you're also going to have uh, some spell slots at level one. There's a, a number of different spells that are, uh, like I said, nature-based or druidic-based. Uh, animal friendship, cure wounds, and ensnaring strike, fog cloud, uh, hail of thorns, hunter's mark. Uh, long strider speak with animals now some of the a couple of these if your wisdom isn't high enough it's it's not going to do you very well like oh well fog cloud isn't i think maybe hell of thorns might be the only one animal friendship as well those are going to require saving throws by your enemies so you're going to you actually well no that's that's a ranged attack so that's actually going to be your dexterity or your strength, depending on the weapon that you're using. I think Hail of Thorns is probably going to be dexterity because it's probably going to be a long bow, maybe a short bow. So uh, Hail of Thorns is going to be de depending on your dexterity. But like Animal Friendship is going to be a wisdom-based spell. And they're saving... Th or, is it this? Let's see, let me, let me click on that right quick. Yeah, it's a wisdom save for the animal being charmed. So if your wisdom's not high, then the animal's probably going to be able to save against uh, 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 Animal Friendship. But chances are, I, I don't know how much animal friendship you're going to use in the game. But regardless, most of these spells are going to be okay for a low wisdom. You should be fine. Shouldn't be a big deal if you want to just dip into ranger and have a low wisdom. It should be all right. All right, so if you're dipping into rogue, you're going to get a light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. At level one, you do get sneak attack damage and uh, from both melee and ranged. If you're hidden, that's an extra 1d6 uh, damage to your attack rolls if you hit. Um, but now in regular Dungeons and Dragons, that is only for finesse weapons, which is uh, your rapier, your dagger, and your short sword. However, uh, up until a couple of years ago, the long sword was working as well. So I don't know if that's still the case and on full release, if they're going to fix that or not. So it's de definitely worth testing out. And also, most people who are, are, are dipping into rogue, not multiclassing, but dipping into rogue, are going to want to be more sneaky because they want the sneak attack damage. You, you do get expertise at level one. You get expertise. And expertise um, allows double your proficiency bonus on a skill you may choose two skills that you're proficient in and gain expertise in those skills. Now, that's only skills that you're proficient in. If this is not your original class, then you're not going to be proficient in stealth. So you want to make sure that your origin is one that gives you proficiency in stealth, like urchin, okay? So that way, when you go to your skills, you can go ahead and you can add that to your proficiency for expertise and get that bonus for your stealth. Otherwise, you're not going to have it. And you won't be extra stealthy. And if you're dipping into rogue, you probably want to be extra stealthy. And if you really want to be extra stealthy, and I, I'm, not, I'm not here to make a build. I'm here to just show you the dips. But your race that you're going to want is going to be the Deep Gnome. Because they actually get stone camouflage and they get advantage on stealth checks. So what that will do is that, that bumps your stealth all the way up to plus 7. Actually, it will be plus 5. Because we don't have, uh, we're, we're not proficient in stealth. It wouldn't be plus seven. If you started as rogue and you did that, then and then it would be plus seven, which would be super super broken. Anyway, that being said, at level two you get cunning uh, action dash, and you can do you can dash at a, as a bonus action, and you can also disengage, which means you can get away from the enemy without uh, provoking an opportunity attack as a reaction. So you can go, you can hit, you can run. And uh, they and they won't they won't be able to attack you if you use the cunning action disengage as your bonus action. And that tactic works really well with monk rogues, with fighter rogues, 
Or if you want extra damage with your sneak attack, go Barbarian Rogue. Or even Ranger Rogue for that matter. For your favorite enemy bonus. Alright, sorcerers are natural magic users that don't have to learn their spells from spell books. They just automatically know them. And if you're going to dip into sorcerer, chances are you're wanting to sculpt spells. And let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about there. At level one, you don't get much. You do get to choose your subclass. There's a chance that you, you've picked a sorcerer because you're another magic user and you want draconic bloodline because you want a resistance of a certain damage type and you want the natural armor that the scales from the uh, that dragon bloodline give you. So you have a better armor class and you don't want to, you don't want to spec into a martial class so you're wearing armor. Now that's one option as far as why you would want to uh, spec into, uh, you want to dip into Sorcerer. Another reason would be on levels 2 and beyond, you're actually able to sculpt spells. You have Sorcery Points, which can go into Meta Magic. And Meta Magic allows you to do different things with spells that, you, that other magic users just can't do. So with Careful Spell, you're able to uh, prevent harmful spells effects from affecting your allies which is similar to a wizard's uh, uh, subclass, which we'll get into uh, later on down the road here. Uh, we have Distance Spell, which allows you to double the distance of your spells, so you can actually hit from further away. We have Extend Spell, which allows you to extend the duration of your spells, so you're actually, normally it doubles the amount of time that your spells last. And you have a Twin Spell, which allows you to... Uh, to fire one spell but hit two different people and does uh does equal damage it doesn't split the damage it does the same amount of damage to two different uh individuals now i was i also saw that uh, a while back the twin spell actually could hit the same creature and it shouldn't do that they really should fix that on full release but it should only be able to hit two separate creatures but Twin Spell um, uh, evidently was able to hit the same creature twice. I don't know if that's still going to be the case on full release, but we'll see. Now on level three, now normally I've only been going to two, or levels one and two with, the, with this uh, video, but with Sorcerer, it's a little bit different because at level three, you get an additional sorcery point. By the way, you only get two sorcery points at level two, and you can take sorcery points and exchange those for spell slots and vice versa. So you can take spell slots and turn them into sorcery points and take sorcery points and turn them into spell slots. And it gets a, it's not that complicated, although it sounds complicated. So with a little bit of toying around with it, I'm sure it will be, be easy for you to figure it out. Uh, I'll explain it a lot better in, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a future video when I talk about sorcerers. But for right now, we're going to keep it kind of limited. Uh, so on level three, you get additional meta magic abilities. We have heightened spell, which allows you to uh, empower the, the magical effects to make it harder for a targeted creature to resist the spell. So basically, it makes your DC higher, so that people they have to roll higher to resist the spell of say like charm person or hold person or th something like that. Quicken spell allows you to uh, cast multiple spells in a turn. It turns a action into a bonus action when it comes to casting a spell. So basically it's like um, the fighter second level ability action surge where you can actually do more than one uh, action in a turn. What it does is it turns a spell into a bonus action so that you can actually cast a spell as a bonus action, and, a, and then you can cast another spell as an action. Now, in regular D&D, the rule is that you would only be able to cast a spell as a bonus action and then the cantrip as the action. Now, uh, as far as uh, Baldur's Gate 3 goes on full release, I don't know if they're going to change that or if they're going to allow you to cast two full spells and not just a cantrip and a spell as a bonus action and an action. Or if they're going to be able, to, if you're going to be able to cast two full spells as an action, or and it, well, one as an action and one as a bonus action with quick and quick and spell, we'll have to wait and see and see what they do, and they may change that later on down the road. And then we have subtle spell that says uh, the ability allows sorcerers to cast spells without chanting or hand movements, and allows them to ignore the silenced condition. Now I also read somewhere that somebody said that it also made it to where. People can, or it, it, you can't resist the spell. Like a whole person, if you used a uh, subtle spell, that it automatically works no matter what, no matter what the roll. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I don't know if it was ever the case. It's just something I read. So uh, I didn't, I, I never even, I never noticed that because I, I hardly ever use subtle spell because there was no reason for me to use subtle spell. In Taylor, the tabletop version, 
it's kind of cool for something like sleep where you don't have to use hand movements or you don't have to speak. It just happens. So, uh, but in the Baldur's Gate 3, it's going to be a little bit different. But for the most part, that's one of the reasons why you would dip into Sorcerer is so that you can get meta magic and you can use it for you know various purposes and sculpt the spells to your will so you're able to do different things. Also, Sorcerer typically has a lot of spell slots, so it's normally paired with um, a Warlock and with uh, Paladin. So you have what they call a, sor a Sorlock or, or a, a Sorkadin. They work really well together because they're all charisma based. All right, now Warlock is another caster that you would typically take to level three and then go elsewhere with the with the rest of your build if you were just going to dip into it. And the reason there's a couple reasons for Warlock to be going to level three, mostly because at the third level you get your pact from your uh, from your patron, and it's either pact to the blade, pact to the chain, or pact to the tome. Normally, now in the early access version, we only had access to pact of the chain which allowed us to get a, um, a familiar that we can use. And it was a unique familiar. There were unique familiars that only the warlocks could get, that none of the other classes could get. Um, they are going to put Pack to pack the Blade in, which is going to be similar to a Hexblade Warlock. If you know anything about warlocks, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, we will do a deep dive into warlocks once the full release is out, I'm going to do deep dives into everything. It's kind of hard to explain right now, but if you're going to if you're going to dip into warlock, and uh, chances are you're probably going if you're looking for this spell that everybody wants, it's probably going to be Eldritch Blast. And the reason for that is this cantrip is the highest damage cantrip in the game uh, for for the level that it's at. And then also at level two, you get Eldritch Invocations, and some of these abilities can't be found anywhere else. Such as Agonizing Blast with the Eldritch Blast, it actually does uh, extra damage, uh, which is equal to your Charisma modifier. So you get, like if your Charisma, if you have a high Charisma, let's say you have a plus two or a plus three, you're going to be doing plus two or plus three damage with your Eldritch Blast each and every time. Armor of Shadows, you can cast Mage Armor on yourself at will. And um, which is which is great because it doesn't cast a spell slot. Uh, let's see, beast speech. You can talk to uh, uh, speak with animals at will. Not that big a deal. Devil's sight is really huge because you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, at a distance of 80 feet. That's basically superior dark vision, and it's magical darkness as well. So if somebody casts a darkness spell on you, you're going to be able to see through that, and you're gonna, and it won't it won't affect you. Mask of many faces is a disguised self at will. Uh, repelling blast is another one of the big uh, invocations that you can get and uh, i love this one because it knocks if you, when when you hit somebody with eldritch blast you knock them back 15 feet there's a whole bunch of these and I just those are a couple of my favorites i'm not going to read off all of these because it would take forever but the, that is the one of the reasons to get level two in warlock so you can get eldritch blast and you can get these invocations now if you want to go to level three and get the pact uh, like I said, we're going to cover those, and they're not all in the game right now. It's going to happen uh, on release, but definitely uh, is something to look at. Also, their spell slots, they recharge on a short rest. Now, normally in tabletop D&D, that's a big deal because uh, the long rests are few and far between. It's not that big a deal in Baldur's Gate 3, so that's not really an issue because um, it's so easy to have a long rest in Baldur's Gate 3 that it's just not that big of a deal. Now we get to Wizard, and I'm very particular about Wizards because they're my favorite class in the entire game, and so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'm going to recommend not to dip into Wizard. Now, you can, if you want utility spells and you want uh, cantrips, that's great and understandable, and they get the most varied amount of spells in the game, 100%. They also get their school, their their subclass at level two, and some of them are very helpful. Um, like the abjuration wizard gets an arcane ward that will allow you to mitigate uh, some damage, um, and like the divination wizard will allow you to fudge dice rolls a couple of times during a long rest, and that's all well and good. Uh, ward magic uh, wizards actually have a couple of decent things that they've got as well. However. The wizards just don't come online until about level five when you get your level three spells. Um, and if you're going to go level five, you may as well go to level eight and then and then actually dip into something else rather than dipping into wizard, in my opinion. Now, I mean, there's, I'm sure there are people who are going to say the same exact thing on every other class that I've covered in this in this video. 
but I am particular about my wizards. So that's me. And you know what? You can do as you wish. And I highly recommend that you experiment and tell me what you think in the comments section. Fighter wizards are very, very popular. They're gishes, right? And, and they're, very, they're very popular in Dungeons and Dragons tabletop. Uh, a cleric wizard gives you a ton of utility that uh, you wouldn't normally have. I mean, you can get magic missile and, and find familiar. And you wouldn't have those if you just took a regular cleric and if you dipped into um, wizard, you could get those spells. And that's perfectly fine. I have no, no issues with that whatsoever. Actually, I don't have any issues with any way you want to play because it's your game, guys, and you can play however you want. Okay, so with the monk at level one, you're going to get unarmored defense, which is going to be the same as the barbarian, and you're going to get martial arts. And then at level two, you're going to get key and unarmored movement. Now, key... Um, you, you get key points depending on your level. Key is going to be, uh, there's one of three things. You're going to get uh, Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. Uh, flurry of Blows are immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Patient Defense allows you to spend one key point to take the dodge action as a bonus action on your turn. And Step of the Wind, you can spend one key point to take the Disengage or Dash action as a bonus action on your turn. And your jump distance is doubled for this turn. So, and also, so, and also your unarmored movement is, uh, is I mean, is going to be uh, plus uh, 10 feet. So, if you're not armored, you're also, you, if you start as, say, a, say, a dwarf or a gnome or a halfling, you're going to be able to you go 35 feet. But because you start as 25 feet. However, if you start as a wood elf and you get 35 feet, now it's 45 feet. So actually dipping into monk might be super helpful for you, uh, depending on what kind of build you want to go with. But really your subclass doesn't come online until level three. But let me make this perfectly clear in my final thoughts here. Um, and if you're going to take le th three levels in any one of these classes, you probably want to take four levels and get your ability score increase or ASI or take a feat and just go uh, four levels in a secondary class and eight levels in your main class. But then we're talking about so, uh, we're talking about multi-classing instead of dipping and that's not the whole point of this video. So the whole point of this video was to tell, talk about dips and what you can do and give you some ideas for some different builds. So hopefully I accomplished what I set out to do today and I helped you out in some sort of way and hopefully you enjoyed yourself and you got, you know, if you got something out of it, give us a thumbs up. And if I've earned your subscription, don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications. And don't forget, I will be doing build videos throughout this entire next month because we're going to have a whole month before Starfield comes out and I start covering that game and I'm going to play the heck out of this game, but we got to get our character up to level 12 and our whole party up to level 12 and play all the way through the game. So I'll be delivering you all of those episodes as well on this channel as we go along. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for coming in. Hope you all enjoyed it. As I always say, I am my usual me. You be your usual you and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.